Pods and Ends, the junk drawer of pop culture and geek podcasts. Welcome back to Pods and Ends, episode number three. We have a Christmas episode for you guys today. So I'm one of your hosts, Shelby. I'm Brian. I'm Sophie. And this is Phil. Oh, I was <laughs> not down anymore. <laughs> I, I thought I'd mix it up. Well, you certainly did. Yeah. I didn't know who it was. For Christmas, a innit? Yeah. Let's try something different. La, 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 la. For the sake of the holidays. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so before we dive into our main Christmassy event, let's head to our usual segments and see what we've all been geeking out over over the last week. So first up... I think we better get the big one out of the way, haven't we? The silver screen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats for the silver screen. Two big trailers dropped in the last week. The MCU is busy. It's an exciting, exciting time. There was two. There was two. Yeah, I know. I, I feel I bad thought it was for one. Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of got lost in the shuffle. Right. <laughs> That's well harsh on Captain Marvel, I think, because <laughs> I Avengers... Yeah. I know, End Avengers game, just came on in there. But we're used to Avengers stealing thunder, aren't we? Because we've, you know, Solo got kind of buried in Avengers and now Captain Marvel is. So what did everybody make of the... Let's go Captain Marvel first. Let's give her yeah. her moment there. It's trailer number two, I think. Yeah, this was the first proper trailer. I think the last okay. one was like a teaser. Like a teaser. Deal, yeah. Okay. So what did you think of it then? Are you hyped? Yeah, just all the space stuff, like her <clears> zooming <throat> around all like glittery and awesome looking that's i don't know i'm super hyped for it because i honestly don't know anything about captain marvel really from the comics so this is all pretty fresh for me so i'm excited to have no background whatsoever on a character you know she's really not even had any lead in except for the whole little beeper thing but that doesn't count yeah no she's really like i love her like flaming mohawk thing that's going Mm -hmm. on when she's in like Super Saiyan mode. I'm really, I'm really, into- <laughs> I'm, I'm really hyped for that. What, what about you, Phil? What are you? Uh, I got you- from the trailer that I reckon she's going to be the Marvel's version of Superman. Yeah, I think that's the idea. She's like yeah. the I have all the powers superhero. <laughs> she's going to be kicking some butt. Yeah, we've got a video game, haven't we? And she is really, really powerful in that. I can't think what that is. It's like a. It almost is like, like a Street, street Fighter. Fighter. Oh, yeah, Marvel Street Fighter, but with all the. Probably. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And she's super powerful in that. But like you say, that's the only kind of... I don't have any background on her either. So it's going to be quite fun to come into it pretty pretty fresh. And yeah, like you say, not not burdened with... Yeah, <laughs> preconceived anything. notions. <laughs> and Black Panther was kind of like that, except they sprinkled him into the other films first. So you kind of got a little bit of an idea, but she is pretty much just a blank slate super for me. Super fresh. Yeah, super yeah. fresh. <laughs> what did what did you think, Shelby? Are you uh, are you hyped for this film? I'm extremely hyped for this mm-hmm. film, and the the origin story, whatever they're creating for her, looks so cool. This idea that she was near death, and then they saved her, and that's given her these powers. I think it's going to be amazing. What did we all think of Nick Fury being in it? Then they've sort of like done a bit of reverse aging on Sam yeah. Jackson, and he has Seems both eyes. Kind of, yeah. Yes, and a cat. Or he's into cats. <laughs> <laughs> I liked that. <laughs> yeah. I think that the use of comedy in Marvel movies is what makes Marvel movies so good. And it's very natural, and it's not a Poe Hux moment. <laughs> oh, gosh. Mm. I'm let's, sorry. Let's I'm sorry not. for bringing it up. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but what I mean is that they can pull off these really funny moments, and it doesn't take you completely out of it. Well, mm. I think that's a great segue into the avengers because that is a heavy trailer until the very end and ant-man's like hey can you buzz me in (laughs) (laughs) and then it's just like you leave this super deep story that it has to be coming with like a grin Mm -hmm. on your face you're like cool 
honestly, Ant Man just warms my heart. He's he's one of those ones that I never expected to like, and I enjoyed his first movie, but something about Ant Man and the Wasp just it is it just stole it for me this year. I absolutely love that film, and I'm really I'm really hyped to see him kind of. Did you not realise Thor Ragnarok was released? Uh, no, that was last no. year, wasn't it? I thought it was this summer was Ant Man last like yeah. November time was Thor oh, okay. I think wasn't it yeah I believe that's so right. yeah, yeah no don't worry don't worry <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> so I'm not trying to like Marvel start a rumble <laughs> Ant Man was no, uh, was there yeah. to bring the love back after Avengers ripped yeah. out your heart I'm just gonna come in there and say I am now more convinced than ever I've been convinced Captain America is not surviving the Avengers films but not only that I'm now starting to think Iron Man's not I don't know if anyone else got I just from this trailer I was just like I I don't think he's gonna survive he looks he looks older he looks less like a superhero he looks like someone who who's gonna die basically and I'm worried and I'm not ready I think they both look resigned Mm. if that makes sense they're just I think they know maybe what's coming I mean obviously Tony's not gonna die the way they make it seem in the trailer no 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 I'm not confident he's walking out. Who do you think is going to save him? It could be Captain Marvel at that yeah, point. That's I can't see past say, yeah. Captain Marvel, yeah. 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 I don't know. I'm still rooting for Pepper Potts to like use a suit that he's built for her. Oh, yeah, true. They wouldn't have as many Pepper references in. You know, she's she's always she's been such a constant, never quite a never quite a sort of even side character apart from his films, but she's always there, isn't she? So like you say, whether they're saving her for Something like that, because she was pretty badass in Iron Man 3, wasn't she? Mm-hmm. So she was more than capable of jumping the suit and going out there and getting and, him. And um, Hawkeye's back. Yes. Let's not forget him. What do we think of that, then? With a, like, sword? Oh. It's a different character, isn't it? I love that. I had no idea that I cared about Hawkeye until you mm. see that scene and he pulls the hood off and I'm like, <gasps> yes. Yeah. <laughs> It was weird. I got like, yeah, it weirdly hit me in the feels. I don't know why. I think, actually, I do know why. I think it's because the reason he's up and like angry is probably because his entire family got dusted. So now he's got nothing, you know, to live for, I guess, or to care about other than just being awesome. This is so true. Mm-hmm. Going to be Hawkeye Ronan, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. Ronan what his well. character yeah. is, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I so it's like an that. evolved Hawkeye, and he's just going to come, and it's going to be amazing because he's probably one of my favorite Avengers. Mine too. Yeah. Yeah. See, I yeah, never really cool. cared for him one way or the other until it's weird. I mean, obviously, I must have, or I wouldn't have reacted that way when I saw him in the trailer. But I never really thought about him as being, I don't know, someone that I cared much about. But then, definitely, was my highlight. It's. It felt to me like it it kind of the, like you say there was a such a dark vibe but at the same time this movie can't be as dark as the last one right because this is like this is our closing chapter on the Avengers so this is going to I just thought it was interesting that they ended the trailer on like a this is going to work isn't it kind of vibe and then mm-hmm. then they hit you with Ant-Man as well so I was like I feel like we're going to pretty quickly maybe not Tony I think Tony might be in a bit of a dark place for a while but I feel like certainly all our guys back on Earth are going to be quickly coming up with a plan. You have um, to imagine that Tony yeah. had the vision. He did. Back in Age of Ultron. When they were all dead around him. Yeah. And then he's the last one dying. So. Do you think that's going to come true? I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> that's what's so good about it as well. <laughs> yeah, true. All but, I know is Doctor Strange said in game in Infinity he did. War. He did. Yes. We're in the Did you like that now. they. Do you like that way of dropping the title with the trailer? Because Star Wars, we historically get the title first and then we get a trailer drop. So we I have like time it with to it. kind of it. Yeah, I like yeah. it all together. I mean, what does the title really mean anyway? Nothing. Mm. Let's be honest. <laughs> what what did we get? Like, The Last Jedi sent us all into orbit, didn't it? Right, yeah. So. And then like, <laughs> none of it mattered. It's just... it's Yeah. The only th- neat thing, I guess, is we do get that small window to theorize what does that mean? yeah exactly come up with our bad ideas 
Yeah, I think it's with Avengers as well. We, if they said Endgame, we'd have been like, well, we know exactly what that is. There's no point in even speculating. It's not quite the same as Star Wars, where it's such a Yeah, unknown. I don't know what they could have named it other than like Captain Marvel saves the day. What are your guys' theories on how Ant-Man gets out of the quantum realm? I just don't know. I'm just going to say that he just figures it out himself, I think. I'm wondering whether they pressed a button beforehand. Before they all disapparated, they were already <laughs> hitting. <laughs> I like that they're not they're not really gone. <laughs> and then he managed to get. But yeah, I don't know. No, I don't. have you guys got some theories then? Uh, somewhat. I I read something somewhere saying that what was it? I think his mom, not his mom, the mom that they saved the in mo- in Ant-Man. the wasp's mom. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, something about not getting trapped in a what was it? A time vortex. vortex or something like that. So there's a theory that he just went straight through the time vortex and it popped him out somewhere. Yeah. That would be more interesting than, oh, they hit the button right before they went away. So it's not that big a deal. I have one issue with this movie. Oh. It's that Thanos has completed his task he wanted to do. Yeah. Killing half of all living creatures. Yeah. So what, the revenge is just to kill Thanos and... Well, that... I suppose they can nick he the gauntlet be, and then reverse time. I was going to say, he's not in a way going to... He sort of will... Will he stop being our antagonist, so to speak, because he's not antagonising anymore? Like you say, he is done. So do they then end up going on a heroic mission? Does it take on that kind of trope? Yeah. Or is he going to have like a maybe right-hand man vibe who's just going around doing some stuff? I don't know. Because, yeah, like you say, Thanos should be kicking back on his mountain going, well job well done and just waiting for the sort of the gracious thanks of a um you know of a population <laughs> that's what he thinks i don't know it's a good point yeah i think i think it will be something where maybe they do that sort of deal with the devil type thing to get things back to where they were and that creates the new enemy because they've done something i don't know a lot of people are saying galactus is going to get involved i don't know a lot about him except that he's up there on that Thanos tier of big bad, so I don't know. It'll be interesting. Well, I think we're all that's our that's our main thoughts for uh, this week <laughs> on those trailer drops. I think we could almost do a whole episode just on them, but let's try and keep going with our segments. We'll head on into Netflix and chill. Netflix and chill. That's me. I'm up. That's right. Um, so I watched uh, Neo Yokio. <laughs> Has anyone else watched it? Neo Yokio. No, no you were just that watching one. it when I got in. So it's a six-part anime. Sophie's informed me <laughs> that is based on New York, mixed a little bit with Japan, and it's about a in the future. Yeah, it's set in, in the, the future, future. It's, it's a... about a demon yeah. hunter who is also a fashionista. <laughs> And the best combo. <laughs> and it's just very, very uh, fun. There's excellent voices. Richie Ayoade is one of the voices. Jude Law's a voice. Stephen Fry is a voice. Oh, cool. Yeah, because this is a Netflix original series, yeah? Yeah, and Jaden Jaden Smith. Oh, okay. He's the voice of the young lad. Oh, okay. I binged it, and it was just fun, and I would recommend watching it. So, yeah, it's only six episodes, and yeah. So what, it's following him hunting demons then? Yeah, the new series came out two days ago, actually, I think. Oh, okay. From when we recorded this two days ago. So so I've got to sit down and watch that at some point. So what does he... It's basically his grandma, or his auntie. I can't remember. (laughs) Um, (laughs) She gives him jobs and he has to, like, he's a security guard for a big party and there's a demon and then the demon ends up being being the girl that he takes and stuff. And then he has to fight her and it's a bit like... How does he fight? We got we got swords or magic? What are we what are we dealing with here in terms of combat? What do you think? Punching. Does he punch the demons? You punch a demon to death. Yeah, it <laughs> <laughs> could be an option. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Anyone like, could do that. Strong. It's magic, obviously. It's magic. Okay. He's one of a kind, and he he's always worried about being on the like the style list, the number one style list, and he's got a rival <laughs> and stuff. I love it. And they play hockey, like not ice hockey, other hockey, field hockey, mm-hmm. oh. and stuff. And it it's just really fun. <laughs> It's very much Instagrammable. Okay. I think the only reason I got into it is because of uh, Crew Beauty. Do you think? Because a similar sort of like 
Well, have they got like a social media thing going vibe. on then? Oh yeah, it's all about like being on this list and his mates, and they're just so funny. Oh, it's, it's really funny, and I think it's because they're all got. It's meant to be like New York, because they have like the Empire State Building and stuff like that, and the One World Tower, whatever mm-hmm. it's called now. And then, but they've all got British accents because. They're all British actors. It's playing. all British actors. Yeah. Playing, <laughs> apart from the so Smith, yeah. British actors in America with Japanese anime. Yeah. yeah. Cool. It's Perfect. Fun. Um. Okay. Well, that sounds sounds like worth, we might have worth to get a watch. Yeah, yeah. I think it's funny. Yeah. It's and only like twenty two minutes an episode, so you can oh, yeah. smash it out in another awesome. two hours. I always like sort of testing out. Um, and I think Shelby, you had a uh, Netflix and chill for us this week. I well. do. I have a couple actually. So one of them is um, Chaos which was Chilling Adventures <laughs> of Sabrina. Oh, yeah. And We've I've, been wanting to get into that. I have been wanting to get into it for a while as well. I saw so many people talking about how cool it was. Granted, they're all mostly Riverdale fans. Okay. Yeah, because the it's the same creators. Shared universe-ish. Like, they mentioned Riverdale twice. Yeah. Oh, did it? Oh, okay. So before you like dive into that, can it, did you watch the original Sabrina stuff when you were younger? Yes, I did. Okay, Which is like okay, a so comedy. That. That's a comedy. Mm-hmm. This is much Not. darker. <laughs> I mean, it has like it yeah, has I mean, a lot of funny, funny moments, moments, but I wouldn't refer to it as a comedy. Some really good messaging. Fair warning. I don't think the finale was that good. No, it was not. Okay. But okay. everything yeah, leading up to it was. Yeah amazing and there's about to be a christmas special coming out the 14th yeah i think that oh. might be out already by the time we release this i don't know yeah so timing's hard and there's a trailer that just released a few days ago for the christmas special and it i i thought it was gonna be like a clip show or something like that but it looks like new storyline and it looks pretty good oh we're definitely gonna have to check that out is um is salem in it mm-hmm. yes Okay, because that's an important question, I feel, to uh, establish. That's exciting. Yeah, and the aunts as well? Mm-hmm. It's, it it oh. follows the the basic premise. It's a retelling for sure. But yeah, it goes way off on almost everything, which is cool to to me. Which um, And I didn't know this about Riverdale. My students actually told me it's based on Archie Comics. Like, they have Jughead and all those characters and... <laughs> It's just like a modern retelling of Archie Comics, and I was kind of blown away by that. And I think that is kind of, I guess, these creators stick. They take something, and they just make it brand new, which is cool, I think. I like the idea of being inspired by but then taking it in a whole other direction. Right. But if you like spooky things, it's very occult, dark, mm-hmm. satanic, but but cute <laughs> I yeah, guess it's, it's got a really weird vibe it does um i really liked it and they i was reading that they shot it and they shot the finale and then they just started filming the next season immediately they took a week off so the next season's coming out in april which usually with netflix originals you have to wait a whole year yeah and apart from that yesterday we watched one and a half movies oh my god on netflix uh, one of them was Dumplin. Oh, okay. And so that's been getting a lot of buzz on social media recently. And we watched it, and it was a really it's good, cute. feel-good movie. Mm-hmm. So it's don't expect something that's, I don't know, Oscar-worthy or anything. But it Also, was... Jennifer Aniston has not changed a lick since she did Friends. <laughs> I don't. She's she's like a cyborg or something. She just doesn't age. No. Yeah, it's unbelievable. That's crazy. Yeah, but she she plays the heck of that out of that role. Yeah, it's good. It's all pretty well acted. Uh, it's cute. It's fun. Definitely, if you're looking for just something to watch that has a good ending and yeah, makes you feel very good, uplifting. uplifting movie. Watch that. And then. Uh, we were just kind of getting ready for our day, and we started watching The Lobster. God, the freaking worst. I don't know what is wrong with British people. I swear <laughs> to God. <laughs> oh, no, is it us? What are we doing now? <laughs> Actually, I think it's like Irish, and then the writer-director is maybe like from the Netherlands or something. So, I don't know, but it was not oh, good. so bad. We watched, well, 
we paused it and we were like, so how much further do we have? Are we just going to finish this off? And we were only halfway through. It we felt were, like it should have been <laughs> over. Like We were like, nope. The only other time I have felt like this when watching a movie was with that stupid movie Hereditary. I kept wanting that movie to end and it didn't and this one thankfully I wasn't in the theater so I could just be like nope I'm done this is bad it was painful and it's one of those that's getting like rave reviews well we heard so much about it so it's like oh it's on Netflix might as well it was Oscar nominated for something yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it got a lot of nominations at different awards and it's Best original weird screenplay. for the sake of being weird and Sure, there's a message there, and it's not like one of those Radiohead fan things where people are like, you just don't get it, man. <laughs> it's I get it. It's just poorly executed. The premise is neat. It seems to me like if they would do it backwards and turn the story into a novel, someone could write a really good novel about it. I agree. It. But, oh my God, it's just... Don't waste your time. Yeah. It's bad. I was going to say, on that bombshell, uh, <laughs> let's head, head into uh, What's Your Jam, everybody? Far out, man. What's your jam? I've got a um, Christmas and music-related joke. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, fire away. What do you call a gingerbread man that's had one leg bitten off? Um, I don't know. Limp biscuit. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, it's funny because British people call cookies biscuits. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a joke on so many levels, isn't it? I was going to say, I have some What's Your Jam, everybody. Okay. We're, we're back in BTS territory here. <laughs> this week, BTS were nominated for a Grammy, becoming the first ever K-pop band to be nominated for a Grammy. It's for their most recent album, The Love Yourself Tear. Tear? Tear? Never can tell which one that is. I think it's going to be Tear, because Tear is like, it's a positive album, so I don't think it's going to be like Cry. But anyway, <laughs> they've been Love nominated yourself. for a Grammy. This is exciting. Yay. Maybe we'll get a performance at the Grammys. I'm really hyped for the boys. I know it's going to mean a lot to them. And the second bit of BTS news is that they performed at the Mellon Music Awards, which is out in, it's out in Korea, you know, it's out at the Asian um, Awards. And their performance was incredible. Like, Phil and I have talked before about some of their how some of their songs could appear on stage because they've got some pretty epic songs which you you know when you hear a music and you like hear hear a music <laughs> nice talking <laughs> sophie <laughs> jeez um when you hear a song and you think that would be amazing live and they'd be able to do something really great with this live their performance was incredible because the whole kind of premise of idol and like the music video and you can see with a lot of the visuals and the choreography they were inspired by a lot of Korean traditional dancing. So there's a few like moves that they do where there's a lot of traditional dance going on in there, but they've obviously just put a modern spin on it. So at the Mellon Music Awards, you had the opening, obviously, is by their lead dancer, J-Hope, who's just, the way that man moves is, like, next level. And we had, like, fan performances, you know, as in fan dancing with fans and stuff. So there's a real traditional vibe to the whole staging of this performance because then yeah Jimin came on with fans and then Jungkook comes out with the two like flapping things I don't know what they were they were like long long flapping things and then there was like the dancing dragons and stuff so it was just <laughs> it, it was a real visual treat and it was everything that I thought that 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 song could offer and it's a really it's a high tempo so I think again in one of my deep dives into YouTube I saw a video of them saying how they were kind of nervous about that song because it's so dynamic on stage and it's like you have to still be able to hold up your vocals whilst doing all these crazy dances and I thought they pulled it off that's what's been uh that's been what's my jam this week is I'm back on that BTS hype train again Shelby you had a little what's your jam I do so I love Spotify and so at the end of the year Spotify does um this thing called Spotify Wrapped, and it wraps up all of your data from what you've listened to over the year and gives you some analytics on it and then also creates like your top 100 uh, a playlist for you. Um, but what I found was interesting was I didn't realize how much music I listened to in a year, 
and it was 13,630 minutes. Wow. Which is an interesting number. Um, 15 of those hours, though, were Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> And that's basically, I mean, the majority is one album, which was Kamikaze. But um, it gave me my top five artists, which I felt was a really interesting mix, and I'd like to share it. Number one was Eminem. Number two was ABBA. (laughs) Number three was Drake. Number four was Blink-182, or 182. (laughs) (laughs) And number five was Adventure Club, which is a... uh, like dance electronic group. What sort of gets you from you're in M and M, and then do you just kind of go going to bash out a bit of Dancing Queen now? Is it sort of is it one <laughs> half to the other, or do you reckon some of it is like your gym playlist or your workout playlist, and then others is like I'm dancing around my kitchen kind of? What do you reckon it is? I think that's what it is. Yeah. I think it gets it gets. Um, you know, I have stuff that I listen to whenever I'm at work, uh-huh. and I'm trying to. Um, get a lot of things done a lot of times that ends up being dance electronic Uh because if it has words and I get distracted um but if I'm doing something kind of mind-numbing at work then I can listen to something like Eminem and I'm like I'm just gonna crank this out Mm. uh but then when I'm working out it might be Dancing Queen it might be Drake it might be um more electronic music something with kind of heavy bass Um, So, yeah, I think it it, it stems from that. One of the interesting pieces of information was it gave me my oldest song. So the song that is the oldest that I listened to in 2018 was Please, Mr. Postman. Um, And what is that song that it's related to, Brian? It's not related to. There's a new song that's a ripoff of Mr. Postman. I don't know what it is. It was popular for a while. But every time I hear it, all I hear is Postman. Is it, what, stop, whoa, yes. Wait, wait a minute, minute, Mr. Postman. That one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's okay. the one. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's interesting that you said about, like, what you can listen to at work and stuff, because that is, I- I'm sure that's a reason why I ended up getting into and enjoying K-pop so much, was the fact that I couldn't understand what they were saying, so the words never distracted me, and... Ah. Yeah, because I used to have K-pop on at work, and like you, I don't think I ever normally would have other kind of music. I'd have soundtracks and stuff to listen to just because, or like when I was revising or something like that, I'd listen to Lord of the Rings soundtrack or whatever, Um, which is why whenever now I hear like the Minds of Moria, I just suddenly go back to like A-level science, and I'm like, ah! But um, (laughs) yeah, I'm sure that's why I ended up, and then I quite like it because then I just can't understand what, you know, if the lyrics are rubbish, I'll never know. We we have depends who's on in the morning is what we have playing because uh-huh. before the shop opens we have some music playing. So uh, if Aaron's in, then we have a bit of pirate metal. What is pirate metal? It, <laughs> it's metal, but they sing about like raping and pillaging and stuff. Oh my gosh! So, so as if they are <laughs> yeah, pirates and getting the and getting the treasure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, <laughs> fine. Oh, interesting start to the day. Yeah, I, I didn't know that was a subgenre. No, but... I didn't. Yep. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or we have um, Evanescence and Nightwish, which I always tell them to turn it off if that comes on. <gasps> that was yeah, like that's op- garbage. Oh, operatic that was my metal. jam. I love operatic metal. <laughs> that was like my jam in kind of. What, 2004, 2005? Yeah. I was such a big... I have a Nightwish tattoo on my wrist. That is where that came from. I didn't know that. Didn't you? You didn't know they no, did a song for that actually <laughs> That's embarrassing. Yeah, that's where I heard, first heard of that. If, if it's me and Mike, then we normally have something from 1995 to 2005. Pop mm. punk stuff. So that's where you blink 182 just to cause a rift <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. That's where all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Sum 41? Yeah. All... Do you go Sum 41 then? No, it's 41. Okay. Oh, I didn't know. And then was. if I get the choice, we normally have just Prodigy smashing out because I think it makes them all work harder. Yeah. We used to do kickboxing. And then, and yeah, because it's December, it'll be Christmas tunes now. But Yay. we did put on metal Christmas tunes, which was like ACDC covers of Christmas tunes, oh, which yeah. is a bit weird, but... Yeah. yeah, we're just trying to stick stuff. with the traditional stuff now. <laughs> so in that case, shall we dive on into the game room? You walk into the game room and immediately take 14 damage. 
Yeah, so we went to Dorchester today. <laughs> Did a bit of Christmas shopping this morning. Dorch Vegas. And we got a few new games, didn't we? <laughs> we did. We have got... So some of these, we picked up a few, like that Boulder Dash game, which is just like a family. It's fun. It's a thing to like chuck out on the table with like parents and stuff like that. And it's not too, it's not like a Phil and I, we're going to get stuck in kind of game. It's just a, yeah, a family thing. We basically at, at Bowls the other night, we had a games night and it was one of the games we played and it was just a bit of fun. And yeah. Yeah. Thought we'd yeah. purchase it for a cheap price. Yes. So we also got Lord of the Rings. No. Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. I keep getting those two. <laughs> I know, they're pretty, it's surprising. <laughs> sort of surprising and not surprising. So we've got Game of Thrones Monopoly. Yep. And Game of Thrones oh, cool. Risk. And Game of Thrones Risk, which looks really good, actually. Because you're, you're literally fighting for Westeros. Um, and you've got, I think you've got Starks, Baratheons. So it's the War of the Five Kings. So you've got Starks, Baratheons, Lannisters, Martells and Tyrells. And... Yeah, I mean, Risk has for a really, really long time been banned in my my household and any house that I'm in because I find it really frustrating and I'm such a bad loser at games. Hence why we've had all the co-op games going on, in, uh, as you'll have heard in some of our last ones. Um, but yeah, so Risk has been banned for a really long time because I get really close to winning and then someone pulls the rug out from under me and takes it away. But I, th- <laughs> I think... I can I can get on board with it because it's Game of Thrones, and then like if I lose, I'll just be like, "Ha, gutted House Martell or whoever I'm playing." So I feel like it won't be quite yeah. as I might not take it quite as personally. It would just be more fun because it's Game of Thrones and it's not like oh, I'm gonna be India and try and take over China. It's yeah, more, it's it's more sort of it, yeah. We, we can, can pretend have, we're the characters. Yeah, we can have a bit of fun with it, and yeah. I think it's the same with um, the Monopoly. It looks like there's a lot of. Like the stops around the board, the, there's like Hand of the King and Valar Morgulis, which makes me think that something dreadful is going to happen it's there. It's an over 18s recommended for over 18s only. The Har- the Monopoly game as well. So. Yeah, <laughs> really. But I don't know if we're like, are we bought, oh, borrowing man. off like the Iron Bank or something yeah. like that? Like, what's going yeah. on there? <laughs> Those are going to be some weird chance cards. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, yeah, I'm excited for both of them, even though they're actually, like I said, not normally games that I um I can tolerate playing because of the aforementioned bad loser. And then we also have, I don't know if you guys have come across this on your... Side of the pond. Your side of the pond. Exploding <laughs> kittens. That's what we call it in the UK, the pond. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's, we keep hearing things about it and we're just like, let's just pick it up and have a go. A card game for people who are into kittens and explosions and laser beams and sometimes goats. Yeah. There's like a taco cat on the back here. I don't know. I think yeah. an exploding <laughs> kitten comes along. And yeah, I just think it sounds like it's going to be hysterical. Two to five players, and I think that's going to be a good laugh. It's a silly kind of party game. Mm. We have played it a couple of times. Basically, you, you go through your hand. And you can't have an exploding kitty in your hand at the end of the, uh, okay. your turn or something. I don't know. Yeah. It's all right. It's it's goofy. We just need something fun. So um, that is our game room although we did get one more thing which we thought we could participate with on the pod which is the ultimate gaming quiz it's a quiz game for gaming fans which i believe brian and shelby are gaming fans so let's just give you a little quiz question do you have one yeah All right. one. what is the name of the fictional city where the resident evil game was set well phil that would be raccoon city <laughs> correct Congratulations. Today you have won a prize. Great job, Brian. The prize is a tap on the back. Thank you. (laughs) Give yourself a nice pat on the back. Turn off the television. In fact, why don't you turn off all the lights except for the one over your favourite chair? It's time for Off the Shelf. So we have some things to talk about in Off the Shelf. Mainly, True Beauty uploaded its next episode. What do we think, guys? There's a new boy. Right. I'm not Isn't sure that how what I feel. Last time? No, no, he changed his hair last time. Oh, what yeah, happened. my bad. <laughs> they went to Whack Donald's. <laughs> they went to, yeah, they went to Whack Donald's. <laughs> see, that's that. actually that's actually a joke that you see them call it Whack Donald's in multiple different webtoons. Really? That and is And then cool. you need to pay attention to some of those because sometimes you'll see characters who may work at Whack Donald's in a different webtoon will make an appearance. That is incredible. Yes, yeah, so there's like oftentimes there will be cross webtoon universe stuff happening. Wow. Oh, that's deep. I love it. I love and it. She spilt the drink on the lad and he was stressed and 
Yeah, they were, had the mean guys, didn't they? Yeah. They were... <laughs> uh, I was not okay with them. But yeah, I'm not sure what I think of this new guy. And he's got like a bit of beef, hasn't he? Oh, with the... Uh... Yeah, with the main guy. Yes. What's his name, Sue? Oh, I, why would you ask me that now? Soji. Su- 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 wasn't it? Suho, I think. Yeah. So. I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And this... But he's got like, he's got that edgy, I shave part of my eyebrow part yeah. like thing going on. He's, uh, <laughs> he's dangerous. That, that's an edgy thing. <laughs> <laughs> he's dangerous, I think. I think. Uh, didn't Vanilla Ice do that? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> If you've got nothing Let positive to fun. say, don't say anything at all, Brian. <laughs> you know what, Brian? No one cares what you think That's about true. True Beauty. Because you haven't read it yet. That's true. Oh, Brian, we need to get you into this. You've got 18 episodes to catch up with. You'll whiz it out in five minutes. Yeah, I'm honestly... Yeah, it's true. It's, I'm so glad that there's one, because I'm there's another one I'm into at the moment. It's like, there's 80 episodes. I'm never catching up with that thing. I'm just going to kind of work my You say it. that. <laughs> you say that. I read Wishful Drinking this week as well, guys. What's that, Sophie? That's one of Carrie Fisher's autobiographies. It's um only a short one. I'm in like quite a heavy book at the moment, so I just needed to, to come up for air for a bit. And um, I sort of was swerved wishful drinking for a while just because i don't tend to like autobiographies because i have a tendency to read for escapism and anything that kind of flies too close to real life for me is just like i just don't want to know it's either gonna just get to me or make me feel down and um especially with carrie because you know i know that there's you know a lot of stuff has gone down but oh my gosh just the way she writes about her life she's so she's so witty and funny and self-deprecating i mean she i was chuckling a lot of and there's she's done she has that kind of humor where you're like oh i shouldn't be laughing but that's funny kind of humor which is sometimes the best kind but would you highly recommend this one i would yes so this one's shorter and it's more of a brief overview and kind of she gives you an idea of her family dynamic and there's a lot of um her kind of mental health journey and how she uh, she kind of goes from the beginning of saying she had this like electroshock therapy which affected her memory and there's some things that she couldn't remember and just to like get you with that gut punch towards the end she then goes on to say and i think she has quite famously said this in interviews and things she remembers the entire layers hologram message to obi-wan kenobi and it just like gets to you when she sort of says that and then now obviously having seen it in the last jedi and obviously with carrie passing on i was just like i'm just not going to be able to ever watch that message again basically because it's just (laughs) um yeah it's just too much but i've got the princess diarist on my shelf as well which is the one where she um she spills the tea on her and harrison so uh i'm very much looking forward to that because she completely skirted that issue and she mostly talked about george and the whole like there's no underwear in space which again she was just hysterical about she's um yeah she's really funny amazing lady so brian you've been uh you've been word nerding this week haven't you what have you been word nerding over yeah i'm still working my way through mortal engines by philip reeve looking forward to the movie coming out it looks uh so far as i've read fairly true to the book so uh yeah that should be good Mm -hmm. and the Long Way to a Small <laughs> Angry Planet by Becky Chambers mm-hmm. that was recommended by another, none other than Soapy Lawrence. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Shucks. <laughs> I did that one, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> and for once, someone wasn't like, yeah, I... I hated it. <laughs> no, I like it a lot, actually. It reminds me of The Expanse a little bit, that series of books, which I haven't read. I've watched part of the series, uh-huh. but... It's just like a world that we live in now, fast forwarded and trying to find out what that would look like. That kind of sci-fi rather than a different version of, you know, the world kind of like uh, Star Wars Mm. where everything is completely different, even though, you know, there's humans there for some reason. But yeah, it's uh, it's good. I'm enjoying it very much. We've just got our big mission to punch through this new area of space and if you don't know what that is you should read a book and find it. <laughs> yeah it's it's quite an impressive because it was her debut novel i think and it's quite 
impressive when you consider that's like her first her first attempts and she's got a bit of a sciencey background and like i think isn't this something to do with her parents i think that one of her parents is like a science professor and so she's had all that side of things but she's also had an english side of things so it just yeah i i really enjoyed it i thought it was it was a charming book and um you'll yeah, spoil it i know i'm probably need to just <laughs> <laughs> i probably need to just yeah, it does have that she gets into some of the science sometimes which is something i like it's something michael crichton does a lot in mm. his books so and i know that turns some people off yeah. but i enjoy it because they don't over explain it to make it be like this really could happen yeah. i swear but they just give you an idea of kind of how things are working yeah but it's good yeah i recommend it yeah totally okay and finally let's move into the locker room <laughs> Listen up, sports fans. It's time for the locker room. This is all me. Yes, it is. Of course. Take it away, Chad Chatterson. Sure, this is Chad Chatterson. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, boxing happened. Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder. Drama. Drama. Was it a fix? It was in Staples Centre. Mm-hmm. and the is this, is this wrestling? Boxing. Boxing. Boxing, mm-hmm. okay. Tyson Fury, the Gypsy Sorry. King. The Gypsy King, yeah. Um, so I li- I got up at three o'clock in the morning, my time to watch to listen to it because I had to go to work, so I just listened to it, and for oh Tyson Fury's won this easy. The scoring came out from the three judges. A hundred and fifteen, a hundred and eleven, a hundred and ten, a hundred and fourteen, and then a hundred and thirteen all. So, in a massive fix, that is, I'm just putting out there, it's a fix. <laughs> <laughs> it finished in a draw, which means they have to have a refight, basically. And the big fight with against Anthony Joshua, which whoever won was going to fight him, whoop, whoop. is not going to happen until at least another year. So it's just a massive money-spinning fix, and it's a shock, and it turns me off boxing. But mm. the fight itself was brilliant, so it's difficult to know yeah. what's what. Uh, in more news, football news, Pele. I don't know if you know who Pele is. Going out with Shakira, whose hips don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> That's PK. No. Oh! Pe- Pele's the Brazilian football from the uh, 1950s to 1970s. Okay, no, she's not going out with him. Um, yeah, he... I was going to say that would be an odd pairing. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, called Lionel Messi the greatest footballer ever. Not that brilliant, <laughs> basically, or not that special. I think was the actual quote. And uh, shade. Yeah, embarrassing. I feel embarrassed for Pele for saying it. <laughs> Any football fans out there will understand what I'm saying. You three probably have literally have no oh, idea. Hold on, soccer. You literally have not no word. idea what I'm on about. <laughs> I know who Pele is. I knew that name. Okay. Do you not know Messi then? That's interesting. No. Oh, okay. He's not uh, well, not made it in America yet. <laughs> um, and then Bowls news, obviously. Two two lots of Bowls news. We played or oh, three lots of Bowls news. We played national mix fours. Me and Tom and Janice and Jenny it got absolutely destroyed. Oh no. 18, 29, I don't know, 19 shots to four. I just give up after it got... You were not unbeatable magic. I was not unbeatable magic. And then we played (laughs) National Fours against our own club mates to get through to the next round, quarterfinal of the area. Mm -hmm. And we won on an extra end. Nice. And one of my bowls was described as a bowl of the game. (laughs) So I was very happy with that. (laughs) And then coming up, once the next episode is recorded, we will have the results of the big tie to get through to the quarterfinals of the national championships, Wiltshire versus Oxfordshire oh. at Wesley Cot in Swindon. Well, thank you. If you want to keep up to date, please find Five Rivers Bowls Club <laughs> on Facebook, <laughs> and live updates will be going on there. Nice. It won't Excellent. because this episode will probably be released after uh, the no, date of the still, game is. But... The, the sentiment was there. We all got the sentiment, Phil. Yeah. Thank you. And that, Chad. Phil, Chad. Obviously. Chad, yeah, Chad. Uh, and that's all I've got <laughs> for this week's Locker Room. All right. Mm. Let's hop on our sleighs. Get our... <laughs> oh! <laughs> get our jingle bells ready. I'll get my Mrs. Claus outfit on. You could maybe do that or uh, <laughs> or not. Let's head into the main event. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is your main event. 
Christmas everything. So Christmas, guys. We're all feeling festive at both sides of the uh, of the pond. And this episode is going to release, <laughs> what, exactly one week before Christmas? Just less than that, actually, yes. isn't it? Yeah, so hopefully you'll all be feeling festive. You'll be doing your last minute Christmas shopping. Um, fascinating We're fact. We're just starting. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Starting your panic buying. Um, not meaning to start this on a downer, but this week that we're recording is actually the number one week in the UK for divorces. Go figure. But what? <laughs> Why would you bring I'm that up? I'm not going to your in-laws again. <laughs> I'm getting divorced. I just figured it would happen over Christmas, but there you go. It was a little fact that I learned earlier in this week. Just a little nugget of information. But hopefully by the time you listen to this, just check mine and Phil's accounts and see if we beat the odds. Because we're recording on Sunday, so I feel like we've, <laughs> we've got through the week. So, as we're saying, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of build up to uh, Christmas, and we all have our Christmas traditions. So we thought it would be fun on the pod to talk about some of our favourite Christmas, or as they say, holiday traditions. Let's go over to you guys then, like Brian and Shelby. What are some of your favourite Christmas traditions that you have? Well. I make Shelby carry on my favorite tradition, and that is having oyster stew on New Year's Eve. So if we're not home where my dad can make it, I make Shelby make it for me. <laughs> That's Aww. true. That's so cute. Which is fun. What is oyster yeah. stew? It's oyster stew. It's I pretty don't, lush. Yeah, I don't know why it's called that, but it's basically like milk and half and half and oysters and butter, and it's freaking <gasps> delicious. We know what half and half is, don't we, from our little American adventures last year. Yeah. It's the good stuff. We know that. So it's kind of like a chowder sort of thing that sort of yeah thing. yeah right okay so, so it's, it's really nice it's, uh yeah it's really there's not much to it but man it's good and just nothing says christmas oddly <laughs> like a bowl of oysters do nice so you have that christmas eve yeah nice. every christmas eve oh that's cute what about you shelby you got any well um on christmas We do, I mean, most people do stockings and they also have their um, presents under the tree, but we have always done Christmas cards for each other um, and you put, you put them in the tree. (laughs) Like in the branches. Yes, in the branches. So, um, you know, our family is kind of like a card family. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're in a card family, Mm -hmm. what that means. Um, so you actually have to like stand there in the store and really think about which cards you're going to get. You don't just get the first one that quote unquote fits. You have to read multiple ones and find one that's... You gotta outsap everybody. Yeah, Yeah. that's the whole point. Or be really, really funny. It's either outsap or be very funny. And, um, it's also expected that you write things other than what is in the card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love Shelby does not work. No. (laughs) It has to be... Best. Dearest Papa. Oh, stop. (laughs) I'm um, writing to you this Christmas <laughs> to explain the depth of my... Okay, you okay. Would not cope well something. In this it's not a way. dissertation. No, I'm but... terrible at this. I hate cards. <laughs> uh, but that is something that we would always do. Um, and then when I was younger, my parents would have somebody dress up as Santa and walk down our street and come to our house and give me one early Christmas gift. Ooh. Um to this day, I still don't know. My dad will not tell me who it was. Huh. He keeps, he always insists it that was it Santa, was Santa. It. <laughs> yeah. But Santa would visit me every year on Christmas Eve to give me one early present. That is cool. That actually matches mine sort of similarly, Shelby, in that we, you know, that feeling as a kid that you get to Christmas Eve and you're just so overexcited, you're going to explode. And I think... My parents were like, we just need to take some of this fizz out a little bit. So we were always allowed a present early on Christmas Eve as well. But it was always pyjamas. So we would know it every year. So you'd get your new pyjamas for Christmas. So you'd have... And sometimes you get like dressing gown and slippers with it as well. Depending on uh, depending on whether we needed another one that year or something, probably. <laughs> depending on how yeah. British you were. Yes, yes, exactly how British you were feeling. <laughs> but yeah, so we always used to get new pajamas. They were never like Christmas themed or anything, so you could wear them the rest of the year. But that was oh, always really cool. nice. And even though we kind of knew that there was going to be pajamas, like mum would always find us really cool ones as well. One year, I think probably the best year that she got 
was we both had my brother and I had like matching but like you know his was blue because he's a boy and mine was pink because I was a gal and that's what they did back in the 90s and he had we had matching gladiators pajamas and he had <gasps> who's the main guy it was it wolf was that his name do you know what gladiators is i don't know these guys must know oh, what gladiators yeah. is well we, we we call them american gladiators i think we had the same ones though i'm sure we all had the yeah, same like wolf and stuff, yeah. Yeah. yeah and so we had that well, and, then, and then i had jet on mine oh and wow she was like the best and they were like pink and i had jet on them and yeah they were my favorite and that is a tradition that alas has not passed into my uh into my adulthood but something that has that i think is just a generic tradition that i am fond of is advent calendars because i oh yeah yeah, i feel like half the fun of christmas is in the build-up and we used to get yeah and actually you might get this brian as a teacher that you get that kind of you do get a build-up through school that i think when you're just working right up to christmas eve and then it's like boom christmas is here enjoy and you're like okay i'm still like recovering from december at work so I think having an advent calendar gives you that little bit of, and I don't feel like too much of a massive child. I still, and we, we, well, you know, we'll make sure we pick them up every year, don't we, in this house? Mine's Pokemon this year. Yeah, I'm Transformers. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> I actually bought them the other way around. I wanted a Pikachu and I bought you Transformers and then Phil walked through the door and was like, oh, you got me Pikachu. And I was like, yes, I did. I sure yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that as well. I knew you I know, said it on purpose. Yeah, I knew you did. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay because mine's got bumblebee on and i do quite like bumblebee so that's that's the only one i know oh no optimus prime but anyway so yes i uh i enjoy advent calendars it helps me get excited for christmas what about you phil uh me um we when you spend too much money on someone <laughs> you put the present a bit like you show put a present in the tree and then the tree gives it to the person <laughs> so the christmas tree always gives a present uh, you had amazing traditions growing up. That's like up. a weird like thing that Dad used to do, just yeah. so we could get extra <laughs> presents. I think, but it was nice, <laughs> nice thing to do. Mm-hmm. And then we gather around the open fire on Christmas. Christmas Eve, and we write our list out for Father Christmas or Santa Claus or Saint Nicholas, whatever <laughs> you want to call him. And you write on it, dear Father Christmas, please this year can I have some new socks? <laughs> and can I please have a pretend washing machine <laughs> or a pretend lawnmower <laughs> or, you know, a new train set or something? And then you stoke the fire up so you get the flames really big and the heat's going up. And then you listen carefully and you hear the jingle bells on the roof. And then you put it up the chimney. And then Father Christmas gets it. Sometimes he'd read it and poke it back down and it'd fall back down. But it's fine because we all know that he was on the roof reading it before. He'd read it. So, okay, good. And, so then, and then he scoots <laughs> off. And then we turn all the lights down, put the candles on, and then Dad reads Twas the Night Before Christmas. <laughs> and that tradition has now carried on that Dad does it to our niece and nephew yeah niece and nephews Nieces, yeah so they go around on christmas eve and he does it with them now it's like a passing of the torch that's happened yeah. Yeah. and instead on christmas eve we just read towards the night before christmas at home by ourselves don't we say yeah which is nice nice yeah that's, that's, that's so really, cute it's a really cute tradition my dad actually used to do that for us too because we, we all had our own bedrooms like i don't know once i was probably six ish no not it's not maybe eight i don't know we moved into our the house where my parents still live, and we each had our own bedroom. But then on Christmas Eve, we all would like sleep in the same room, usually mine. Oh, that's one nice. Of the oldest, I guess. Uh, and then Dad would do the same thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He probably does it for my nephew now. Yeah. Or Will. I yeah, he. Know. Yeah. We always we would read Nightmare. Sorry, Nightmare. Oh my gosh. This <laughs> 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 like a cool read the story about Krampus. <laughs> Well, we would read Night Before Christmas as well as Polar Express. Oh, cute. That was a big one. And then um, not only would we put out milk and cookies for Santa, but um, we would put out on uh, the front porch a bowl of carrots and sugar for the reindeer. Oh, That's nice. That's and quite nice of you. Why didn't you put them up on the roof, though? I don't know. Um, it's messed up. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean... It's really funny to think about now because you'd get up in the morning and like the sugar would be gone and then like in the carrot bowl there'd be one carrot left in it like had been like gnawed on. <laughs> <laughs> and 
I'm just like picturing my dad doing that. <laughs> Your dad Which probably is... didn't do it, but probably raccoons or something. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he was just like, ah, that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> and he would even take, I mean, my dad was very into this. He would take his work boots and put them in the soot. I'm pretty sure this made my mom mad. <laughs> but he would put them in the soot of the fireplace and, like, make, make a couple tracks. foot couple footprints. That's pretty hard and then for. And then trinkle it from the, from the fireplace to the footprints with chocolate kisses. <laughs> That's so cute. It uh, just makes me... <laughs> so nostalgic it's very extra yeah i know right yeah yeah actually my we used to have an interesting one where um father christmas uh my mom and dad used to say to me well maybe don't put brandy out for father christmas because maybe father christmas doesn't like brandy so perhaps we'll put something else down like a little (laughs) drop of lager or something that father christmas actually likes so My mom would probably be like, don't put brandy out for Father Christmas because Father Christmas doesn't need any more brandy. <laughs> but I'd go into school and be like, oh, actually, you know, you, these, all these kids putting out brandy and I'm in on the secret that he doesn't really like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was, uh, well, we've got some nice little traditions. Yeah, it's nice, there, yeah. Yeah, we're trying to sort of form our own, aren't we, as we move along, actually. Oh, we do have, Phil and I do have one little tradition that yeah. started. Walking the dog on a wet, cold Christmas morning and getting soaking wet. Well, no, that wasn't actually what I was going to say, oh, but thanks that for that. sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Phil once very flippantly said to me years ago um, that he doesn't like receiving cards and it's not his it's just not his thing at all and he oh, says it to you sorry shall yeah we? <laughs> say, like you say you know, when you're, you know when you're in a card family and phil is phil isn't very much not and he said to me don't bother spending your money on a card for me i'd rather you buy me a packet of ham so every year no, now for his birthday and christmas without fail i will go out and get him a packet of ham instead of a card for christmas and he is allowed to eat the packet of ham all to himself and it's usually like the nice stuff as well like i don't know if you got you know with none of this like processed rubbish you know it's it's decent ham off the bone and stuff like that it's gradually upgrading Not one day i'm just ham. gonna like <laughs> one year i'm just gonna come back with like an entire pig for you or something when we're like 70 and it's just gonna really have upgraded at that point yeah good but uh yeah so that's that's a little tradition that's uh that's flying strong in the lawrence household now so let's move on to christmas gifts then and we've kind of we thought it would be nice to throw together our ideas of what we think would be nice christmas gifts especially for like the geeky people in your life because um you know we're the cool ones so True. uh yeah what's uh well phil what do what have so you I... got for what you think would be some decent christmas gifts either for yourself or for a fellow geek um i've gone under 20 pound there's only one gift you can get for someone under you guys 20 pounds. Just find the best exchange rate for dollars. We can't. We're just going well, to stick to our own currencies. After Tuesday, own, after Tuesday when the pain crashes due to Brexit, oh, yeah. we'll all be on the same money. Yeah, true. True, actually. So it won't need to worry. You don't need to worry about translating this. We'll um, be the same. So you twen- under 20 pounds. There's only one, one present for you a General Hux Pop. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Who doesn't want to own one of those? Put it on your mantelpiece. Yeah. Say goodnight to it. Give it a kiss before you go to bed every night. He had better get an upgraded pop for episode nine. Exactly. I want it. I want long coat, like cap off. I need it. I was thinking about you guys for this next one. So this is between twenty pounds and fifty pounds. Mm-hmm. A plush, like feeling bag, that is like a niffler. It looks like a niffler. Oh so it's God. a rucksack that's a niffler or a porg one, depending if you're into Harry Potter or Star Wars. Oh, okay. But the niffler would work because then you'd like put your oh put you your put your purse in, in it. it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that's forty two ninety nine. Would it undo its belly as well, where it's got its little pouch? Yeah, it's like got its legs up at that point, and then the belly's like oh. halfway up or it's something. Too cute, too cute. The uh, pork could eat it, maybe. Yeah, and then I thought for more expensive presents, if you're willing to spend up to close to a hundred, there's Good. two things I like the look of. Mm-hmm. For all the traditional gamers out there that are not that traditional, but think they're traditional because they like traditional stuff but okay. they're not actually that old because they think they're old but they're not old because they're like millennial well, i'm a millennial and i'm really hipster oh are they like oh my god do you remember that really old game call of duty 4 like, <laughs> remember when that was about what yeah um so you can now get a miniature playstation original or a miniature snes original uh-huh. playstation going at 
$94.99. Preloaded with 20 games, including Tekken. Wow, okay, yeah. FFV11, Final Fantasy. V11. Seven. Seven, yeah. That's Resident the best Evil. One. Resident Evil, etc. There's 20 preloaded. Mm-hmm. Or the SNES is a bargain, 64.99, mm-hmm. 20 pounds cheaper. I was always a Nintendo man, and that's preloaded with 21 games. So you get an extra game as well, but it'll Mario probably Kart. be Mario Kart and Super mm-hmm. Mario. Donkey Kong. That's honestly all you need is Mario yeah. Kart. Yeah, really. That's um, honest. and yeah, you basically it's, it comes with a HDMI lead. You can buy extra preloaded games that you can add to it. Or you can add games to it via a cartridge input. Um, and yeah, you get two controllers and you just stick it in, play away, choose your gameplay. Just bringing it back to the olden days where you didn't have to press 75 buttons all at one time to be able to do one move. <laughs> you just pressed A was accelerate, B was brake, do a little bit of jumping with your two top ones and use the. Yeah. Use the. Yeah. But things nowadays are too advanced. Yeah. Yeah. That's my list. That's what I would be getting if I was had the opportunity to have someone buy it for me. I'd want a SNES for sixty four ninety nine. Yeah, okay. So, so you you've kind of, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to uh, mini SNES. Okay. We don't need one because we've still got the original. Let's <laughs> <laughs> write that down. I'm actually gonna still got go... the original. Still working. Nice, nice. I know you have. It's down there. I've seen you play Mario Kart. It makes me feel a bit like nauseated now watching it because like, just, like the graphics and stuff is quite. Um, I'm actually going to go I have an assistant manager at work that is not as old as it. It's oh, wow. older than one of my assistant managers at work. <laughs> <laughs> I do tell her regularly. Um, oh, is this the one who's got the same name as me? And you were like, how Phil first described her was, she's like you, but 10 years younger. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's very hardworking, dedicated to her job. Oh, thanks. And <laughs> 10 years younger. <laughs> yeah, she's just 10 years younger. I can't help that, can I? Age is not, age is, uh, time is relative. Stephen Hawking taught us that. Yes. Time is a matter of no concern at all when uh, one quests for the Dark Tower. I'm going to go <laughs> next because mine aren't very good. Because I'm not... Let me guess. Gift card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I literally <laughs> said that. I think a no, gift I'm card sorry. for whatever value you need is the way to go. Basically, I have said that, but I've been like a bit specific, just in the sense that obviously other online shopping retailers are available. But I was just like, if you've got a geek in your life, get them an Amazon voucher, because let's be honest. I was joking. No, I actually did write that. I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I might have written down gift card for yeah, a specific I was say. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Because, yeah, honestly, it just... Because you can get everything you need on there, basically. So, and then I'm kind of going in, like, reverse price order, really. I then said, if you've got, like, a geeky person in your life, find out what they're most into, and then you can get them a Funko Pop of that. General Hux? Well, not necessarily General Hux. You know, there are other characters in Star Wars and other franchises. Um, So you can... Stop what would looking you get me, at me then? Like, well, I, I've already got you a General Hux pop, so I'd, I'd have, have two to of like... them. Oh my god. Okay. Um, and then I thought for like your final, and I have done this with a few of my friends now, where if it's again, it's like a fiver or something like that, if you've just not got much to spend. But again, you know that they're a geeky person. Blind boxes yes. are always a really good option. And you don't even have to, I mean, you can get them something that's like. You know, there's loads of Harry Potter blind boxes out there, but sometimes you just get the cool, weird ones. And I've got a friend that I buy her a blind box whenever I go abroad, and I've got her weird stuff from... I bought her something back from Vancouver, I bought her something back from Korea. And they're just... They're really cool, and they're really good quality. And you kind of take away the pressure of like, oh, I've got you this gift, I hope you like it, because I'm like, you might not like it, I don't know what's in it. And it just sort of takes away that pressure and they're always just good fun while and she's it's been fun talking both to... i put a twitter poll out oh, have you? and 100% of people reckon my gift ideas were better than yours <laughs> <laughs> did you just vote in it <laughs> okay, okay over to you Shelby what's your uh, gift ideas for this year? so for something that is under $20 pounds pounds something that weighs under 20 pounds I would say to get someone it's kind of like blind box, but it's a Keyforge deck. Oh yeah. So I think that I mean, how much are they? Ten bucks. They're ten bucks, and every deck is unique. So even if this person likes playing Keyforge already, 
you're getting them something new. Right, yeah. And if they've never played it before, it's actually a really easy game to play. So, And if you don't like it, you can put it on eBay because, you know, collectors are crazy. They'll buy it. Absolutely. So that's my under $20 gift. My 20 to 50 at first, I said that you should get somebody a movie gift card because there's so many good movies coming out in 2019. And that's really nice because someone might already be going to the movies, but maybe they would like a popcorn and they don't want to splurge on that when they actually go. So I think that either they use it for the ticket or for a snack at the snack bar. I think that getting someone who, if they really like going to movies, a gift card to their favorite cinema would be a good idea. But if you really don't like gift cards, you could get someone, if they uh, play games, online video games or whatever, I would recommend Oxenfree because it's about $20, so it's a pretty cheap game, but it has the most replayability, as I've said before, of any game I've ever played. And I think it's really entertaining. It's definitely not an action game. No, not even. It's walking and talking, (laughs) but it's really interesting and it's not very expensive. And then finally, if you have some money to kind of splurge, I would recommend getting Gloomhaven. So we've been playing Gloomhaven with our friends, and it is a co-op board game. It's about, what, $140? Yeah, between $140 and $150. It's a huge box. It's a huge box, and you're interested in Dungeons & Dragons, but you don't have a DM or you don't really have the time to do all the preparation for something like that, I would highly recommend Gloomhaven because it, it's kind of Dungeons & Dragons light. Yeah, and you can actually play with one person. Like, you can play as a solo player against the board. So it's it's good for people that don't have a friend group that they play games with or people that do. So it, it works on multiple levels. It is expensive, though. Nice. Okay, Brian, over to you. All right, so I think Shelby looked at my notes and took all of my ideas. Did I? So <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna hit you with the, the one-stop shop for all of your price point needs. You just go to Audible, and you can get a one-month uh... gift subscription for 15 bucks, three months for 45 six months for 90 or you could go big and get a whole year for 150 bucks. And there's nothing better than Audible. Like, audiobooks are the best. And your subscription, you get, like, the credits to buy actual books, but you can also listen to a whole bunch of different things they have available all the time. So it's a good gift. And I would also actually recommend, I'm not sure, I think the prices vary on this stuff, but any of the stuff offered by Loot Crate or any of those subscription blind boxes, because I had the the Smuggler's Bounty one from the Funko Star Wars one until they stop doing it I, I mean i guess they kind of do it now but you have to buy them at retail it's weird it's weird what they did with it anyway mm. i enjoyed those and i've done a couple of uh, the actual loot crate and loot crate gaming and they're fun it's fun to get a box full of stuff that might not be exactly up your alley but is geek oriented it's gonna be close yeah exactly yeah. and i mean again you can always yeah. ebay the stuff that comes in the box that you don't like and someone will probably be super stoked that you're selling it so it's fun they do wrestling ones yeah, yeah i think they do them for like literally Al... everything now yeah there's yeah. like owl crate and nerdy yeah. post and stuff like that i've seen and oh fairy loot looks really good as well and there's like, they have like monthly themes a lot of them so some of the real kind of geeky fantasy ones they'll have like a dragon theme and you'll get maybe quotes from tolkien and stuff you know it's yeah it's really really cool there's a lot of thought that goes into them generally and, you know, they're usually just, like, Paul doing it out of their garages and stuff, aren't they? So it's good to, it's good to thing to support. Just keep your eye out on where the shipping is, because there are some that we, we have to really look for the UK ones, because otherwise you just get stung with international shipping, and vice versa. Um, but yeah, no, that's a really cool idea, Brian. I like that greatly. Yeah, it's oh, always dear. fun. You get the, yeah. the blind box, blind box aspect of it and it's just yeah it's fun it's something to look forward to that's what i always like i think best about the smuggler's bounty is no matter what was in it whether i really enjoyed it or not (laughs) opening it was fun so yeah yeah it's nice just to get things in the post that's not 
bills. Yeah, so, no kidding. Right, guys, let's move into some of our favourite Christmas songs because that's like the best bit, isn't it, about the build up to Christmas? Is we discussed when this last time. The like <laughs> the radio starts playing your Christmas songs because I think these guys have said like generally Christmas starts in America what just like after Thanksgiving basically. That's when like, we think that it's allowed to start. There are some people that start okay. like straight away mm-hmm. after Halloween. It's ridiculous. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, generally it's a bit of a no-no here in November, isn't it? Like, it's just, you don't get stuff on the radios. My Christmas started in August, end of August, yeah. into the beginning of September. Yeah. Get those mince pies in, get those Stolen in. Yeah. Gosh. Here we are, this is the Christmas meeting. When did Stolen become, like, a tradition, I swear? Like when German supermarkets took over England. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is true. Um, but anyway, we tend to find that our radios over here start playing Christmas songs December 1st. You might get the odd one that tries to be like the cheeky first one in it, like <laughs> on November the 30th or something like that. But, they um, get frowned upon. Yes, they do. They do. It's like, no, just calm down. And then 1st of December, it's up and running. And our local radio station does a Sleep Till Santa song, which is just incredibly exciting. How's it going? It's like... Five more sleeps to go, five more sleeps to Santa, five more sleeps till the big fat fella comes down the chimney and gives you presents and drinks your beer. Five more sleeps till <laughs> drinks Santa. Drinks your beer. I, yeah, right? I do not it's really like Santa. Santa anymore. <laughs> 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 so anyway, we've um, this has been something that's been a kind of personal joke now on this pod for about a week because we did talk about this off episode i think we were talking about some of our favorite mm-hmm. christmas songs no we talked about it on episode did we yeah we did say what some of our favorite stuff was and then we had done this, this bombshell <laughs> yeah. of fairy tale of new york was my favorite and and it came on and yeah yeah brian and shelby hadn't experienced this joy and now they're experiencing it every time it comes on the radio because we keep sending them videos of it so I hope you're enjoying. We are. And it came on yeah, when we were at a bar. We were at Tiki Co. And we both it's like incredible. looked at each other and flipped out. <laughs> it's like, the thing is I find a lot of Christmas songs, there's a whole bunch of them that are really miserable. The lyrics can be quite miserable. But, you know, in Fairytale of New York, it's basically a couple having a row. But they sort of make up by the end and it's like, it's Christmas, so it's okay. So... That is, but I like I said, I've kind of covered on this podcast that Fairy Tale of New York is my favourite, but it's like new favourite because I am okay with modern, like modern Christmas songs. You know, I'm not just like, oh my no, if it's after two thousand, then it's garbage. Basically, <laughs> like I'm, um, <laughs> I'm pro new people having a crack at a Christmas song, and I'm very taken with Leona Lewis's song, which is One More Sleep, and she was uh, she won our x factor i'm not sure if she's even slightly heard of in america to be honest I like don't know american idol sort cracked of yeah, america yeah. yeah sorry um no but it is a really really jolly song we'll i will i think you should all go and listen to it and you'll feel extremely festive it's got jingle bells going on through it which as we know is a uh and a countdown yeah yeah exactly a countdown to christmas so it's like you just you just can't go wrong basically so yeah, those are two of my favourite Christmas songs. What about everybody else? Dive in with your favourite Christmas songs, please. All I, I want for feel Christmas. It in my fingers. <laughs> That's probably one of my I new favourites. I feel favorite. it in my toes. My toes. <laughs> Christmas is all around me. <laughs> and so Smoothest. the feeling grows. Um, okay. Wow. <laughs> that... That actually was released in the UK. Wasn't Wait, it? really? As a, sing- as a Christmas For real? Single. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, obviously, we're all going to say Rage Against the Machine. Aren't we? Hang on a minute. Do you guys even know about this? I don't know how much you know about like the UK charts. But we have a thing where our... So again, our X Factor, which is our version of like, yeah, American Idol or something. Um, it, it was our talent contest run by that Simon Cowell, which I assume Americans have heard. Yes. Of Simon yeah. Cowell and, like, yeah. And everyone just hates him, basically. And they were getting Christmas number one every single year. And basically, the people of the UK rebelled one year. And they were like, we are not having another Christmas X Factor number one. So they streamed Rage Against the Machine, killing in the name of... No, no, it wasn't even streaming. Was it streaming? Was it? No, they actually had to go and buy it. They did. Was it before streaming? (gasps) So we went out and bought Rage Against the Machine. So downloads. And... They yeah they bought they bought Rage Against the Machine until that game and it was our Christmas number one one year and it was 
an incredible moment. That for is pretty Killing awesome. Killing in the name of. Killing in the name of. Dun, 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 yeah. Yeah. They played a free gig. Yep. They played a free gig in London to say thank you. Yeah, they literally <laughs> chucked on a free concert because they were just like, yeah. It was it was incredible, honestly. It was a real Christmas miracle. Uh, it's never that no one's ever tried it again since. But um, anyway, I'm really sorry, guys, to have just barged in there. But I got overexcited about Rage Against the Machine. So carry on. What's your actual favorite Christmas songs? Well, my actual favorite is well the newer one. Um, All I want for Christmas is you. Oh, Mariah yes. Carey. What a classic. Always. <sighs> and then other than that, I like White Christmas by Bing Crosby. Yeah. You just know it's Christmas Day. As soon as Mariah comes on, you're like, it's here. It's happening. Mm-hmm. It's Christmas. <laughs> it's just iconic. I like, uh, I have this Beach Boys Christmas album that is pretty good. It's got that little St. Nick. It's very, uh, <laughs> I don't know. They, they tried really hard to make Beach Boys songs about Christmas. And it works for me. <laughs> and I like it. Are there jingle bells in the songs? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, and what about you, Phil? Step Into Christmas. Yeah. That's our favourite song. Yeah. I like, uh, yeah, you know, Christmas is Christmas, isn't it? Yeah, it's um, that's a really good... Step Into Christmas, for me, is always like a Christmas party kind of song, isn't it? You just know that that's coming on at your work, Christmas party, and... I'm more about, I'm more about uh, walking down the high street, or Main Street, as they probably call it over in America, <laughs> and... Listening to brass bands play Christmas carols. Oh, yeah, we do have a lot of carols around here, don't we? Get the Salvation Army out playing yeah. them and stuff <laughs> yeah. like that. And that was what I think of when I think Christmas songs. Yeah. Good King Wentz this, this, this. So you're talking more of the traditional, yeah, your carols as opposed to. Yeah, but played by a brass band. Hits. Yeah. Oh, we don't Specifically. Want to sing like someone on, yeah, yeah, someone on the drums who looks really unenthusiastic and then like a guy <laughs> who's quite clearly overly into it and then two people shaking their like charity tins and then you give them a quid and it makes their day they play a bit harder don't they after that i don't, I don't know so yeah i just like it's just fun listen that and then you can go down and we've got the yuletide festival on the 12th of december yeah. in blanford and we'll go down and they'll sing some christmas carols and it's just that's christmas isn't it yeah in a nutshell yeah hopefully there'll be it won't be raining. But, <laughs> Probably will be, actually. You know, it's, you know. That's what I think Christmas songs. Yeah. I'm not all commercial like you. <laughs> oh, yeah, apart from Elton John. <laughs> Don't give me that face. <laughs> does, El- does Elton John, like, transcend consumerism? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just a good song. Yeah, it's a good song. You're quite right. I would listen to a brass band play if you step into Christmas. I don't know that that would work, if I'm honest with you. It might do. Moving on. Films, folks. <laughs> Films. What are... Or movies... What are our favourite Christmas movies? Phil, you're looking really up for this one. Too. Back to the Future. Okay, I'm not sure. Die Hard. Die Hard is now. a Christmas movie. I don't understand no question. this. Die Hard is a Christmas What's movie. What's happening? Not because you watch it at Christmas. No, I never watched Die Hard at Christmas. Everyone does. I didn't. We watched it this year. There you go. Wow, yeah. okay. It's a Die Hard Christmas. <laughs> and then, yeah, Back to the Future is always one. And then we always seem to watch Forrest Gump at Christmas as well, which is a bit, like, sad because it's a bit depressing, isn't it? What, your family would watch it? Yeah, we watch it together. Yeah, of course. Oh. The tit scene where he touches the boobies. <laughs> cringe. Watching that with dad. <laughs> but I remember being quite young watching it and not understanding any of the drug stuff in it. That's how young it was when I watched it. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I don't know, that's always, that always reminds me of a Christmas movie because he used to sit and watch it with dad and Martin and mum. Okay, but like, so is there any actual Christmas movies that you like? Because yours are kind Die of... Die Hard is a Christmas like movie. Like these new traditions. You just stop it. <laughs> these are like new traditions, aren't they? Of like... Because I think we've all said, haven't we, that Harry Potter seems to have become quite a Christmas thing. Like they... Our, our TV channels start running Harry Potter and Star Wars seems to become like a Christmas thing. But um, is there an actual Christmas film that you no. like? Not at all? No. Oh, Okay. So it's Die Hard then for Phil. I approve. <laughs> I'm Back to the Future. What about what about you, Brian? Say anything other than Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually like the old Rudolph. Um, I don't even know what you call that claymation, stop motion, whatever it is. The old Rudolph movie with the bumpkin that bounces and the elf that wants to be a dentist. Uh, I want to be a dentist. <laughs> I have not heard of that. It sounds. You've adorable. never seen it. Oh my goodness! Oh my There's a whole like. A uh, bunch of 
movies like that that have the is yeah, it claymation? The, yeah, I don't know. It's stop motion, I think, because I don't know if it's actually uh, clay. But I don't think. Is that like morph? Yeah. Is that Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer? Yes, it sure is. Oh, with them. Yeah. Aren't they the? Yeah. Okay, I do know them. They look like they're like woolen. They're, they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It has yeah. like the little snowman dude that like narrates the story, and then Aww. she thinks that cute. Yeah, exactly. There you go. It's rated eight point one out of ten on IMDb. Wow. Yeah, it's because it's go. terrific. Twenty thousand people have voted that as well. Oh, fair enough. Okay, so that's one of your favorites, then, is it? Yep, that would that would be no. my tip top, and then Christmas Story would be my. Oh, that's so classic. They put it on like. They put it on loop. End up watching it. Never straight through, but I see the same like the same three or four scenes probably six times on Christmas. You'll shoot your eye out. <laughs> yep. I thought of another couple. Home oh, Alone. Okay. I was gonna say I thought you'd Home Alone's a good one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Home Alone and National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Yes, that's I a good one. loved that growing up. Just that when they put the Christmas right. tree and he buys a massive Christmas tree and they open it and they just smash all the <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Let's go and get the Christmas tree. It's just so ridiculous. It was so ridiculous, <laughs> wasn't it? And then there was like a squirrel inside the Christmas tree. <laughs> it's just, I feel like there was something funny that happened with like the attic as well. It's like the things. posh neighbours oh. and the posh neighbours and they opened the tree up and it smashed through their window as well. It was just, I, I think, <laughs> I think it just really like encapsulated that we all get a bit eccentric around Christmas time. Yep. And it just, it really captured that for me. Of that it's just like, we do these mad things and we have to get, we've done, you know, the really, our Christmas tree is too big for our living room. We've got a tiny living room and a good, like, you know, there's a huge chunk of it that's taken up with this massive, unnecessarily big tree. But you have to do it because you're there yeah, going, everybody what tree can we it, buy? Yeah. Let's get the eight footer, you know, <laughs> like why we've done that. But we're now shimmying around a Christmas tree in the mornings and it's... it's <laughs> worth it let's, o- <laughs> let's open this debate up um love actually oh, oh gosh no. boo no. <laughs> <sighs> aside from the song busy, yeah and yeah. his little cursing bit at the beginning <laughs> when he keeps saying love instead of christmas uh yeah that movie's not good <laughs> no it's was that not a good on movie the radio? <laughs> no <laughs> that's like at the Honestly? very beginning when he's trying to record the song oh and he keeps saying the right words instead of the Christmas version. And he yes. has this big, long <laughs> cursing. Tirade. It's so good. Um, yeah. So it, yeah. To clarify, that's Bill Nye, um, who's sort of the kind of main the main thread of this. Because that, that's the thing with, with Love Actually. There's lots of individual stories that you kind of you dip in as the film goes along. And then it's sort of how they're all interwoven with one another. But there's stuff that's much more positive than others there's some quite dark storylines going on it's a huge cast half of harry potter's in it for one yeah, and then... I, that's one of those <laughs> things where you see too many famous people in one movie and you're like oh this is <laughs> gonna be bad <laughs> yeah they spent their whole budget on actors and they have no story see i think <laughs> <laughs> you might have to watch out when you come to uk in july <laughs> <laughs> Because you might get lynched for because it is an absolute classic it's in just, the UK. It's like yeah, this not is, a bad, not a person in the UK will have a bad thing of, yeah, to say about love. Actually, there's a bit of cheese going on in there, and like I said, there's some some threads that I like more than others. There's some that I find absolutely despicable, but then humans are very despicable. It's a very human film. Um, it's what the story of Snape and Trelawney before they went to Harry Potter, isn't it? <laughs> That's why they don't get on. Exactly. <laughs> That's why he went to became a Death Eater. She was Bellatrix. Anyway. We all know that Liam Neeson, that little that little boy of his, he broke up with a girl at the end. It went on to be Anakin. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, I love Liam Neeson's story in it, actually. That was a really, uh, that was a sweet little story. Yeah, it's that just was probably a, the oh, best actually, one. Yeah, Hugh Grant was pretty good as well. So basically, you've got polar opposites that we love it, and you. Brian and Shelby really didn't. Yeah, you know, um, I think it's a British thing. Yeah, it, could it might be. be. There is a. Hu- There's so many little things that we laugh at. Yeah, I'm glad it, that, that might we just watched be... it, but mm. I would never watch it again. <laughs> See, I would put British it on. isms. Yeah, I'd put it on like every Christmas. I'd put to it be on honest. most weeks. Should get on and put oh it on. Oh my now. god. Yeah. <laughs> 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 But it is 
is funny how that can sometimes happen where it's just like because i i always think that we're like exactly the same um and we've all got similar tastes and i think that our cultures are exactly the same and then there's something about humor that just can completely hit like miss the mark some bits of american humor that can just miss it for us completely and we're like i don't get it and then vice versa i just think i'm not saying that you don't get it at all there is a lot of i'm not saying that even slightly because it is a dumb film (laughs) it is a dumb film but it's just interesting isn't it how there's just stuff that's like yeah just totally it's just really british i think do you think that's what it is i bet if you didn't grow up with it you wouldn't like it as much either potentially actually that's true because we've had it going well, I on i think you're wrong <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's been i don't remember a time obviously it is um is it a 15 or something so i think i wouldn't have had it on as a kid but um yeah it's certainly maybe you should all check it out and make up your own minds and let us know you, what you think of like actually if you didn't like it message brian it and shelby <laughs> <laughs> and if you did like it give uh, give me a fill a shout um something that was recommended that uh to each other that was a hit i watched white christmas yesterday at shelby's recommendation because shelby am i right in thinking it's one of your favorite christmas it films? is my favorite christmas mm-hmm. film mm-hmm. so what are you, you thinking like do you want to trash it <laughs> 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 they were gonna the... say they liked it but not now yep not now <laughs> no i did i really enjoyed Bing it. cosby's in it yeah do you think they blew his eyes up a lot Probably. I, his eyes were very blue, but I don't know if that was like a thing of his, maybe. It's Technicolor. Yeah, I wasn't really sure. They're very talented. Extremely talented. Like, like it, you don't uh, see that sort of talent nowadays. So no, 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 no. No. It's such a like old school Hollywood. And the, what, the, uh, the, thing, the only thing that I found really distracting was one of the, um, one of the girls, the better dancer. She was an absolutely like next level dancer. I'm not convinced she wasn't like a robot because she was very sort of she had I, a perfect hour everything shape. was yeah everything was That's perfect we about her and i was like <laughs> yeah i was just like you <laughs> are too perfect looking and you're scaring me a little bit isn't it but it's like she was phenomenal whoa was stepford wifey yeah yeah but they yeah it was just phenomenal and it was really sort of old school hollywood you know i like the settings much, yeah. and yeah yeah and all of it and vermont it just, all that snow <laughs> although as soon as they went into like an empty hotel in the middle of nowhere i was like oh, the shining it's just gonna go wrong <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah what was it that you sort of loved about it then shelby honestly i love the performances because i do miss how people used to have to be triple threats to do anything uh-huh. and um i love the dancing and the different musical numbers that they do um plus it captures that Christmas is a time that miracles sort of happen whenever they get all of the guys that were together in the war for the major. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always think that's really, I don't know, that's the tearjerker. Um, and then obviously the the main love story mm-hmm. where it's like, oh, it almost wasn't, but then it was and everything's okay. <laughs> and he's like the overworked guy that's finally, you know, found his you know his lady honestly mm-hmm. my favorite musical number is actually the sisters routine ah okay it's one of my absolute favorites and the costuming is fantastic mm. it's just gorgeous and i love the clothes that they wear and i'm always been very inspired by vintage fashion so whenever i watch it i think about that yeah i remember it got to sort of cuz it's a very it's a it's a slow burner it sort of takes its time it doesn't kind of rush the story along and i can remember sort of we it was getting towards the end and i was like well it's called white christmas and it hasn't snowed yet and i haven't seen a christmas tree and then you've just got this incredible reveal at the end when you were like oh now this is christmas i i see what's happening here that was amazing. You had this sort of this beautiful room, these trees, uh, just yeah. And those outfits at the end were just when they were all in the Christmas outfits. I was like, oh, this is this is Christmas. I love it. It's very American <laughs> in like that mm. old like Christmas card, uh, yeah, style. Picturesque yeah, no, Americana. Yeah, it, is. <laughs> it was really, <laughs> it was really charming. I thought really, really charming was happy with that record happier with that recommendation than uh, 
than you guys were <laughs> with mine. Hey, like I said, I'm very glad that we watched it. It's just not <laughs> something I'm going to ever probably put on again. But it is Actually, on Netflix, <laughs> so yeah, go make get up it. your own mind. Actually, saying about miracles as well, that is another uh, tradition in my family that kind of tied in then with films, which I don't know if anyone else here has seen. Uh, on a Christmas Eve, we would have our new pajamas on, and we would watch Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street as kids. No, That's a good one. None you of us have seen that. Miracle on Thirty Fourth <gasps> no, Street. Uh, before. Have you? Sh- are you being sarcastic? I can't tell. I've seen Miracle on Thirty Second. Oh. <laughs> uh, I I don't understand that reference. <laughs> it's, I'm just making it up. No, I think everyone's seen like I don't know. There's two different uh, versions of that movie, isn't there? It's there's... like the most famous what? movie in the world. Is it? I don't know, but I used to watch it every Christmas Eve, and I used to love it. Oh, dear. I don't know. <sighs> I, was, I, was, I was also really into this film called Lord of the Rings growing up. Have you guys heard of that one? <laughs> I've heard of it. <laughs> Rings a um, bell. Anyway, anyway, I thought I used to think that film was absolutely delightful um, growing up. It was just... When he had... When he gets his real Father Christmas outfit... It was just, it was just too perfect. You would have watched the 1994 version rather than the 1947 version. I would not have watched it earlier. That's true. The 1944 version. No, 19, yeah, the one in the 90s with the girl who's grown up and like left show business now. Yeah. Um, Honestly. Who turns up and everything. An underrated Christmas movie people don't talk about enough is Jingle All the Way. Oh, I don't think I've heard of that one either. Jingle All the Way. Isn't that the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? Yes. No, that movie's garbage. (laughs) What? It's garbage. No, that's complete garbage. <laughs> that Brian, one is great. Could you say great. what you think, please? <laughs> <laughs> that movie. Stop holding back. It's, is utter it's garbage. It's awesome because it's so funny because he's trying to get this number one toy, like that everyone's trying to get. It's basically, I think it's making fun of like the Tickle Me Elmo craze I think that it happened. Came out before that. Was it? I don't know. But 1996, s- it came out. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know. No, I yeah, don't know. 96. <laughs> But he's, like, trying to get the number one toy for that year yeah. for his kid. It's and like it's... a Transformer-looking thing. Yeah. And the things that he goes through, and then there's this other guy who's trying to get it for his kid, too. and The arch rival. Yeah. Classic nemesis. It's great. <laughs> no, it's totally a terrible movie. <laughs> <sighs> I love that movie. You know, the another one you that I absolutely refuse, I absolutely refuse to watch is um, the Snowman because it's just like, oh no, why do we have? Yeah, no, just can't no. go there. The no, Snowman. Frost, the don't try it. Okay, you are not a ten-year-old boy. You the cannot. Look at <laughs> yeah, no, I just I can't go the there. It's sad. <laughs> it's sad. It's really sad because no. it doesn't always end like Frozen, does it? That's what the snowman needed. He just needed Elsa to turn up and help. Oh my god! Situation. <laughs> hey, so let it go. Uh, <laughs> That's it. This episode we can't top that. <laughs> We've think, peaked, uh, guys. We've peaked. <laughs> we beat. Yeah. So uh, let's uh, let's call that an end on this uh, this episode. <laughs> if you uh, if you want to let us know some of your favorite Christmas traditions or gifts or songs or films, hit us up. Shelby, where can you find the uh, the podcast? You can find us at PNE underscore pod on Twitter and Instagram. You can send us an email to contact at podsandends.com. And you can also check out our website, triple dubs, podsandends.com. Triple dubs. Triple dubs. <laughs> yeah. That's w- great. W-W-W. Triple dubs. <laughs> anyway. <Come> on, bruh. <laughs> that's our show. Thanks for listening. Talk to you later. Merry Christmas. Merry yes. Christmas. Happy Christmas. Bye. May your holidays be bright. Bye.